Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. I'm going to talk about various subjects and today I wanted to talk about an experience that I've been having and that I would like to talk to you about so you don't, well, so that you're more better prepared and can plan better. And it's about moving in with someone. Um, when you, there's a lot of people moving in, apparently the millennials, 59% increase have been moving in and people have various reasons for moving in with somebody. Sometimes it could be financial, sometimes it could be company, sometimes it could be to help someone out. The latter is why I ended up living with somebody. It's only short term, but it cannot be minimised. That's what I've learned regardless of the duration, regardless of how you know a person, allowing somebody to come into your home under your space without having a formal agreement is deadly. It can spoil the whole relationship, especially if the expectations haven't been sorted out, um, if two people have made different assumptions, if the finances hasn't been sorted out, it can be havoc. Anyway, let me give you a little insight into my experience. My experience is that I've been, I've known this, well, I've known my fellow for over 12 years. And we'd broken up and we'd, been, we'd had about a 12 year gap, to be honest. And we decided to reconcile last year. I think as you get older, you think that, you know, people in our age group um, are much more sensible, much more mature, much more mature, much more responsible, and they don't have such big expectations. That's my, that's my opinion on it all. And you know, you kind of learned from all the, your past experiences. You're no longer a teenager, so you don't expect to be making the same mistake. I might as well be sixteen. For all that I've learned over the years, I might as well be sixteen because I found myself in a situation where I felt like a child. I didn't feel like a woman in her 60s at all. I felt like a child. And it's because I had not given this situation enough thought. And you know, you hear about it all the time. You hear about the warnings and you think, oh yeah, you know, I know, I know um, how to handle this. And because I know my partner, I just thought, you might, I thought to myself, he's honest, he's got integrity, he's responsible, he's reliable, and he still is all of those things. But the funny thing is, is that there are different expectations that you do not really come to light when you live with somebody. Now, what happened was, um, he was in a house and um, he was renting a house. He was renting a room because he had rented out his house. So he's renting out his a room. He's renting a room. And in um, November of last year, um, the landlord said he wanted his home back. He was being repossessed. So he had to find somewhere to live. Now, because he had somebody in his house, he had to give them two months notice. And so there was this gap. And, you know, trying to rent a place these days, as far as I was concerned, is very, very difficult. And especially for a black man, especially for a smoker. And it, since he was self-employed, you know, it'd be very difficult to get references and all those kind of things. So I thought, man, you've been, you know this man. You've been dating him, you know, albeit once every two weeks. You've been dating him for nearly a year. And it was a kind, I had the best of both worlds because I felt as though I had a boyfriend, but I also had my freedom to do what I needed to do during the week. And so um, it was kind of like a pseudo relationship. And I thought to myself, well, what I will do is I could offer him, you know, just until he gets his house back, offer him um, a roof over his head. And in my head, I said, it would be a good way to get to know him properly to see whether or not we can build on the relationship to see whether or not we can take it to the next level. At that point, before he moved in, he was just dating. It was, to me, it was just like, you know, a, um, a dating situation. You know, like when you're on, when they have Love Island and Love Island says, oh, are you my girlfriend? And they formally have to ask if they are a girlfriend before they actually commit to each other. But that's how I was thinking. I was thinking, okay, um, we just date in every other month. I know that we're, we're monogamous. We're not sleeping with anybody else. 
and that's how it was. So I thought to myself, good opportunity to see if this is somebody I can live with and see if we can take it to the next level. Six weeks, that should give us enough time. So, made well, didn't make arrangement. It was very heart-lighted agreement. I just said to him, look, you know, I'm not going to see you on the street. So you can move in for, you know, until early New Year. And then you move into your place. So he um, said he appreciated it. And that was fine. Didn't talk about finances. Didn't talk about expectations. Didn't talk about anything. But I had expectations. I had expectations based on previous relationships. I had expectations based on what he had told me. He, how he had conducted his relationships in the past. He'd been married before and he used to, he was telling me that his wife didn't want for anything. He provided for her. If um, she came home first, she would cook. If he got in first, he would cook. And I thought to myself, OK, that's all I need to know. I just need to know that my man will provide for me. And if he's in the house, he's going to look after the house while I'm out at work, especially like he wasn't working. He's, he's self-employed. So those were my expectations. I didn't think, I thought to myself, well, I don't need to ask him about money because I'd lived with, I'd, I'd lived with men before who, you know, on a Friday when they got paid, if they got paid weekly, they just put the money on the table and say, Mona, just buy what you need out of it and, um, you know, put away the rest. And so I, I didn't have to ask for money. I've never had to ask for money. So, OK, the first week went by. There was no money. Never no mention of any money. Um, second week went by, still no mention of any money. And I'm like, mm, it's a bit strange. Third week comes up and I'm like, no, this is a bit awkward. And I've, I've, I've felt quite embarrassed to have to ask now. I'm feeling embarrassed. I'm thinking, bloody hell, if I'd known this, I would have asked up front. I would have said to him, look, up front, you can stay by me but I expect so much a week and you can do the shopping. That's what I would have done if I had known it would reach a point where I needed to ask. So in my mind, it made it awkward. So I just thought to myself, well, I'm going to need to ask him then. And I didn't know how to because, you know, how you know, it's just, oh, well, I guess, like I said, I don't like asking for money is one of my worst case scenarios and not having that experience it made it very very difficult for me but I see it as a character building exercise I see it as one of these things that I need to learn how to do to ask for what I want when I want it and all that kind of stuff anyway I didn't know how to ask so I thought I'd leave a voice note and tell him that way and I thought well I'd ask him for a hundred quid for you know, for the duration, it's only like second week in January, he moved in on the 20th, just before the 20th of November, you know, that'll, that'll offset most of the stuff, because I didn't want to be inconvenienced, we hadn't talked about, we hadn't talked about what my finances were like, so I thought that will cover me, you know what I mean, it will cover any inconvenience or any little extras from him staying there, and then if he did the shopping, you know, keep it down to a minimum, I'd buy the meat, and he'd buy the other stuff. And but it wasn't I didn't discuss it with him and I hadn't told him what my expectations were, so he didn't know. For all I know, he he could have thought that, oh, as as my girlfriend, she I can just stay there for free. Maybe that's what he thought. Maybe he thought, well, you know, she's not gonna charge me anything, you know, I can just stay there until I move in. But there's me thinking. He was paying 400 where he was living. He was paying, he was, not only was he paying rent, he had to pay gas and electricity towards the end and he had to buy his food. So I felt like, well, I'm gonna, you're more or less saving him at least 450 a month, probably about 500 a month. So he's bound to give you a few quid a week. That's how I was thinking. I didn't think I'd even have to talk about it. So, but the reason why I'm saying this is that when you decide to move in with somebody, the first thing you have to get clear is your expectations. The very, very first things. You cannot make assumptions. He made assumptions. It's not his fault. I made assumptions. It's not my fault. We did not formally document it because for me, it was just a little short-term thing. 
and I wouldn't have to worry about anything. But it's amazing. They say money is the root of all evil, and it can be, you know, if people have different expectations. So that was that. So got that. So that was the first thing is expectations. You must discuss your expectations before you move in with somebody. The second thing is finances. You need to discuss finances. This is just a short term thing. And another thing, you need to document the duration. I mean, I made an informal contract with this with my partner, thinking that, you know, it, it's just something to tide him over. You know, I'm just doing you a favour. It got to the point where he's asking, he's saying we didn't make an agreement. Well, I haven't got anything written down. And I'm like, whoa, this is a totally different ball game. I wouldn't have had to think that I would not need to write down something when he was supposed to be, when he was somebody I was helping out. And we were technically boyfriend and girlfriend. Now switching around, I didn't make no agreement. So regardless how the du short the duration Make sure you write the date they're moving in and the date you expect them to leave. That's another thing. Everything should be documented. And like I said, you can know somebody for years. It doesn't mean that in a living situation it's going to be the same. Because when you're with somebody 24-7, that's the only time you can get to know them. So, so the second thing is sort out your finances. If it's a long-term situation and you've both got properties, you might want to take out a cohabitation agreement. Be careful how you obtain it if you're not going to go through a solicitor because they do have some online. They say that they're free and then when you fill up the documentation they're asking you for money and asking you for yearly um, memberships and all sorts. So be careful. But do get one. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a one from a solicitor. Even something where you just both sign on what you agree and what your expectations are. That's also very important. Otherwise, what is a, could be a wonderful partnership could turn out to be very um, uncomfortable. And like in my situation, I felt intimidated, I felt threatened, and it's not a nice position to be in. I never thought at my age I'd, feel it, I'd be in a position like this. But like I said, we are constantly learning all the time. We cannot take anything for granted can't assume that you know someone and the funny thing is is that for me I think he's got a lot of integrity to a degree but I also think he had his expectations maybe he thought we were taking it to the next level but didn't think it was like a not like not necessarily a try but he didn't realize that this was an opportunity to make things better between us I think he probably thought okay things was okay before so therefore this is going to be okay. But what I had been doing, which I realised I should not have been doing, was I was making excuses all the time. I was making excuses for his behaviour. And I didn't realise that that was just the way he was. I, you know, I was making excuses when he was grumpy and bad tempered. I put it down to this neighbourhood, that this neighbour that gave him problems. If his car wasn't working and he was grumpy and bad tempered, I put it down to the car. When we was in Jamaica and he was bad tempered, I put it down, it down to him not being able to get a car quick enough. If he, he was bad tempered about something else, I put it down to the noise in the hotel. I found afterwards when he asked me, how come I haven't changed? I was the same all the time. He asked me that and it forced me to think. So why did I put it up with it? If I don't like it now in this environment in my home and I realised it was because I was making excuses for some reason I thought in my home where he felt safe and comfortable and didn't have to worry about what the next door neighbour was doing, whether he was clean, whether or not he wasn't clean, he's talking throughout the night, I somehow thought that in my home he would be happy. What I found was he was still grumpy. Sometimes he wouldn't acknowledge me. Sometimes he would ignore me. Sometimes if I said good morning, you know, he'd just grunt. And I'm like, no, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't, this isn't the way a couple interacts with each other. A couple who respects and appreciates each other, that's not how they interact. And I started 
from then thinking to myself, is this the person I can see myself growing old with? And then there was, you know, a couple of other things that I thought to myself, I don't feel quite comfortable. And so what happened was, you know, towards the end when I realised that, okay, we're coming to the time when he's supposed to be leaving and, you know, the be his attitude towards me didn't seem to be improving. I actually said to him that, you know, I've been tolerating it and it's because um, I know he's leaving soon that I, you know, I'm putting up with it. Oh my God, became intimidating and threatening. And I've never seen, I mean, I know that's who he is, funnily enough, but I didn't think he would be like that to me. So, you know, but what I'm saying is that when you move in with somebody, it does give you an opportunity to get to know what they are like and you cannot take it lightly. I took it too lightly. I thought I had it sussed. I thought that I know he cares about me. I care about him. There's nothing that can go wrong. But I think he had higher expectations of what living with me for these six to eight weeks meant. And when they did, when I didn't fulfill those expectations, he just flipped. And so um, it's a very, very, I can't stress how important it is to clear the air up front and have your expectations, talk about them. Like I said, whether it's short term, whether it's a week, two weeks, a fortnight, whether you plan on living together, for years. Have your expectations, discuss them together up front in the open or else don't do it. Make sure you've got a cohabitation agreement if you've got property both of you and um, finances. Make sure that you know that if it's a long-term situation that that person isn't coming in with any debt, um, that you know, you're, you, you're, you've discussed how you're going to divvy, is somebody going to do the cooking, is somebody doing the cleaning, is somebody doing the ironing, is somebody doing the washing, is somebody cleaning the windows, you know, that kind of stuff. Talk about it up front, how you, you know, because sometimes, like I'm a person, I hate ironing. I prefer to cook. Now, you can, I could actually say, if I thought about it, and these are things that you can discuss with your partner or whoever you're moving in with, what do you like to do? What is your forte? Do you like to clean bath? Do you like to clean kitchens? Okay, you do that and I'll do that. And you have that kind of responsibility. But if you haven't discussed that and you're, in, you're, and you're expecting a person to do certain things and they're not doing it, that is how um, arguments happen and how relationships break down. So living, I cannot underestimate how important it is to discuss um, everything up front before you decide to live with each other and have it down in writing. Regardless of how well you know the person, have it down in writing. Um, I just wanted to, I took some stuff out of psychology today. So um, I just wanted to say, Okay, so they, they're saying, okay, it's very important to talk about finances, talk about expectations, which I've done. The reason why you're living together. Why are you living together? Some people want to live together because it's going to improve their finances. Some people want to live in together because they want the company. I remember one guy said, oh, look, I'm getting old. I just want to move in with somebody. So just in case I fall, fall down the stairs, you know, I want to know that there's somebody in the house. So another person might just want the company. Another person might not even care about the company. They just want somebody to do the housework or somebody, you know, a house husband. You don't know. But all I'm saying is find out up front what it is you expect or why it is you're moving in together. Both of you should know what that is up front. In my situation, mine was just temporary um, housing somebody while they was in a dilemma or why I thought they were in a dilemma. Um, what else? Um, so if you're planning to step up your relationship with your significant other, you're not alone. According to the Pew Research Trust, 9.2% of millennial couples are cohabiting, a 59% increase since 1997. 
So um, lots of people are living together. And I would imagine that when people move in with each other, it is usually financial. What I discovered is that I I really enjoy my own company and I've, I've spent, you know, years on my own. And I, you know, I think we, we live in a culture or society that kind of puts on pressure, um, puts you under pressure to be in a relationship. But, you know, some people, they really thrive in relationships. I tend to thrive when I'm not in one. So, but, you know, I think it's good to be able to not be selfish and to be able to, it's fine if you don't want to be in a relationship, but I think it's also important that you can share a part of yourself and a part of your life with other people. You find a lot of people who live on their own become selfish and they don't want to share and they don't want to compromise. And they do become very, very insular. And to be honest, this was another reason to show myself, am I capable of living with somebody? Am I capable of sharing my time? There's certain things I, you know, I don't like to compromise on. Like, you know, if I had somebody in the house saying, listen, I don't want you doing videos. I don't want you in your office doing your magazine. I'd have an issue with that. But I, you know, that is something that was important to me. So I made sure I said that up front. At that point, that was all that was important to me. I didn't think of anything else. And once that's okay, you know, and that is what you need to do before you move in with somebody. Whatever is important to you, is you need to discuss it up front. Otherwise, it can cause problems. Um, like I've already said before, you jump in head first, especially with long term cohabitation arrangements. Have a personal checklist. Why, why are you moving in together? How will you split the household expenses? Who should be responsible for what household bills? both from a financial standpoint and from actually managing those bills and getting them paid on time each month. Create a spreadsheet, Psychology Today says, of all the possible expenses you expect to have, such as utilities, groceries, broadband, council tax, and then divvy them out among each other, noting what percentage you each will pay for different categories if you plan to share the load. Agree on the right location. That's another thing. Sometimes people, they're so enamoured with each other. Oh, they don't care. Oh, I'm going to come and stay with you. And then they realise they've got to go to work and it's taking them hours to get to work. And there's tra um, traffic on the road. And then the relationship breaks down because it just becomes, it's just not cost effective. Um, prepare for the good, the bad and the ugly. There are always pros and cons to moving in with someone on the upside. You may find it extremely convenient to have your significant other around all the time and they may be tidy and respectful roommates. On the downside, they may snore like a bear, they may, may leave to, um, toothpaste all over the sink, they may need skid marks down the toilet, <laughs> they may need their clothes all over the place. Sometimes there are things you won't know until you actually make the move. But if you think about what could be and fully understand the good, the bad and the ugly beforehand, you'll be mentally prepared to compromise through tough situations. Create a breakup plan. Having a plan for a possible breakup is always a good idea. Not that you're going to go into a relationship planning to break up, but what if there's a breakup? You need to have that in the back of your mind at all times, especially when you're, we're living in such a fluid society. Um, remember that cohabiting couples do not have legal protection, but your cohabitation agreement can outline the equitable distribution of assets in the event of a break up after several years where assets are involved. Be respectful about each other's things, whether officially on a spreadsheet or more casually, and inventory of what items have special meaning or value to each of you so that you can delegate back to each other appropriately in the case of a breakup. Consider which items you might want to have shared ownership over. These items are the ones you're likely to sell and split the proceeds of in the event of a breakup. Lastly, consider how a breakup could affect any pets you have. Will there be shared custody? How often will you visit or have the pets? Um, so once you've worked out this process, you should be okay. So we learn by each other's mistakes, hopefully. Don't make them, you know, just make sure you plan well. If you plan well, 
talk about things up front, discuss finances, it should fall into place. And that's all for now.